So I'll go ahead and pay, uh, put things around too. Oh, this one, while I have it in my hand, I didn't talk about um, collage. Again, anything absorbent, you can collage onto it. Here, I took some of my own photographs, but I printed them on absorbent paper. I like using a cover weight paper, because when I found that I used just a thin 20 pound or 24 pound, it was too transparent, and it just, I mean, it would be good for some things, but for what I was doing, I like to have the rigid, and then I would cut around the edges, so when I'm using a big surface, some of the air bubbles can come out, but it also gives a relief to it. So you can see where the photograph ended. You can see the little wrinkle, and I painted on top and then continued to paint. So here all around is only encaustic paint, whereas this is the photograph with the encaustic on top of it. Oh, I'll show you one more. It goes this way. Uh. <laughs> this will look good in 3D. Okay. How did you print that? Is that an inkjet or a laser? It's or an inkjet. I used an inkjet. A laser jet would be used if you're doing transfers, and I'm not going to demo transfers because to me they're time consuming. You have to rub the paper and keep rubbing it and keep rubbing it until you rub all that paper off and then it takes the laser and embeds it into the smooth surface and you have to get a smooth surface by pouring and I'm just not even going to get into that. I've, I've tried it and some people might like it, but not today. Um, you may have said it, but what did you use to adhere the paper? Wax! 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 <laughs> the wax serves as a glue. It also serves as a medium. Also, the word encaustic, which means to fuse, means the medium itself and the process. So, okay, let's get painting. Okay, let me take just a plain brush here, and I've got some encaustic medium already melted here. And my brush, now that it's, it's warm, I don't have to wait a minute for it to completely melt on there. It melted well, pretty quickly. What's the makeup of your brush? Oh, and I'm glad you brought that. it up. Yeah. Natural bristle brushes. Synthetic will melt. Right. You want it all to be natural bristles. Okay, and then, like I said, most people you put your brush into paint and then you want to go to 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 and get the excess. Oh, you're cooling it. Wrong. No. So as soon as it comes out, you want to start to apply. And you're going fast. Okay, it's, dry. it's already cool, so I have to go in. I'm pretty much priming this. You can start with colors and go directly on here. And it depends on what you're looking for. For this, I'm just going to go ahead. I want to build up a thick surface for you because I want to show you how to draw lines. Now you would fuse that after that. Yes, it's right going up. to be a layer that I'm going to be fusing. So one thing about having, also one thing I do is I, I always go ahead and put my backing on. So when I'm done, I'm ready to hang. But for this, I'm just, you know, I'm just doing something really quick here. So, and I work from one end to the other when I don't have something to hold on to, so when I come around, it's not that yeah. hot. What is the temperature of your surface? Oh, good question. Uh, the wax melts at anywhere between 160 and 220. Um, it will flame up at 250. You don't want that? <laughs> <laughs> so, and I've got it right now at about one, I've got it at about 160 right now. They have a nice little, um, a thermometer, surface thermometer to test this. <coughs> and you can just lift lift up the thermometer. It's a little surface thermometer. It works real well. So I already tested, since I've never used this palette before, I tested it at home all around and I found that the 160 was plenty to melt everything I needed. Some people will actually put their board on the palette and leave it there and it stays warm but I've never done that, so I'm not gonna. I'm, I'm not gonna try that. I might in the future. Okay, now the fusing. Okay, this is the base coat. So uh, they have a really good heat gun too. You can put put high or low, and then back here you can do the different temperatures. So I've got this set on medium high back here, and I start on high because I'm really it, it's really fast. But when I start adding the colors, I want to have more control. I'll start with high to get. Um, to get it melted and then I'll turn it low. But right now, I don't know how well you can see up there, but there's little bubbles. Yeah. Can you see those little bubbles? And for the very first one that I'm fusing, I want to make sure every little molecule is in there. 
because your paint is only as good as the surface is adhered to. So, this is a really nice gun. And as I'm moving it around, I'm getting all these textures going, which is kind of neat too. And it, it can be time consuming, that's why I'm doing a little one here. You can, you can spend as much or as little time as you want, but wax has its own mind. It will only melt when it wants to, it'll cool when it wants to, and you can only control it to a point. Does it always come up in texture or can you make it? You can make it super smooth. If you want a flat surface, you pour. You would tape all around the edges and then just literally pour it in there and then let it harden. And that's what you would do your rubbings on. But I, I like the texture, so that's me. And you can get a pretty smooth surface. You see, I've got it pretty smooth on here, but I've got all these little dips and valleys, which I really like. It around and hold the other side. How did you get this texture on this? The, um, the, the honeycomb. Oh, the honeycomb. I just drew it in with my little dental tools. I've got pottery tools and I've got dental tools. Anything you can grab. In fact, my very first tool was my own toothpick. <laughs> I got it out of my bathroom and had to get another one for, for myself, but this was my first tool. Then I went to the pottery store and started getting all kinds. I didn't even bring a fraction of the tools I have. I find that I have some favorites. Then I have a friend who's a dental hygienist. Oh, and she gave me these one. I'm so spoiled. Oh gosh, this is my favorite. It has all these little notes. Okay, and... Right. And then you see how I can just move it around and chase it around with all these textures. Okay. What I'm going to do now, let that... Okay, you see it's glistened, and when the glisten quits, then then it's not going to oh. run anymore. Awesome. Are you yes. seeing this yeah, well? Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is great. Do you always hold them, or sometimes you lay them down flat? Sometimes. Um, sometimes I'll move it around and kind of control where it goes oh. that way. All right. Let's put some color on here. Uh, let's, uh, let's do let's do this. All right, and okay. Here's the medium. These colors are so concentrated. You can use them straight, but you don't need to. They're I mean, they they are just so concentrated. And I'm going to show you that. Let's see if I got that brush with that one. I try to keep the sort of the same color brushes, and that way I don't have to clean as much. So, um, just melt a little bit, and throw a little bit in here. Just melt it. Is that encaustic? What? Is that encaustic? Yeah, this is the, the RNF encaustic medium. Uh, they have it in different forms. It comes in a block form like this. It comes in just a powdered form, kind of. And then it comes in these little beads, which I love. And I'm going to show you something really cool to do with that in a minute. Um, okay, and then I'll get my brush. Let's get this brush. So you don't use the cake medium? No. Okay. I, I just use these. Sometimes I'll just shave some off. That's what I usually do is I take these containers. I always use wooden me, wooden uh, blocks. Do you write that? Oh, you want Oh, no, that's not on there. I'll use um, these mediums and always use wooden um, clothespins so you can pick it up and move it around. And when I'm painting, I, I usually will paint several at the same time. So while one is kind of cooling, I can be working on another and all that. And so I have blocks of color. My palette is usually filled with all kinds of cans full of different colors.